Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we're doing my AFCON quarterfinal predictions, guys. What a quarterfinals we have here. We have eight teams that weren't even there in the last edition of the quarterfinals. All the and all the favorites are all are thinking to yourself, Senegal is gone, Morocco is gone, Egypt is gone. All the heavy hitters are gone. We got some crazy upsets. To recap the round of 16, I only got four predictions of the eight just showing you how unpredictable this is, how insane the matches ups matchups were. And it shows how anything can happen this turn. But we might get a first time winner. Let me know in the comments. Are we going to get a first time winner or not? Um, and so, yeah, like I said, guys, uh, let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, like I said, let's go on and get on with the video. So we're going to start first with Nigeria versus Angola. This is a huge matchup. Nigeria, for me, is probably one of the strongest teams left in the competition. And obviously, they have won this before. And the last time they won was in 2013. So for Nigeria, man, they're looking good. I think their defense is great. Um, Pesero's done a great job with the team. Their mid midfield looks great. Um, the only concern I have with Nigeria is the attack. I just don't trust Nigeria's attack. And yes, I didn't back them against Cameroon, but that was a huge mistake because Cameroon was simply abysmal. This time around, though, I think Angola is going to give them a huge game. I think Angola is going to be Nigeria's toughest game because I think Nigeria, for me, what my issue with this Nigeria team is they just don't, they, they're just not clinical enough in the final third. And I do I trust Osama to be that guy, that difference maker? I don't know at this moment. I would probably if you were to if you put a gun to my head and ask me to yes or no, I'd probably say no at this current moment because I just don't really feel like Osama can be that difference maker. You know, until he actually shows up and proves it to me, then I'll hold my hands and forgive him. Forgive why I say, but at this current moment I can't say that. Because, you know, and the thing about Nigeria is that um they're a team that excels when the when the odds are against them but when there's pressure on them to perform well we know what happens generally as for angola they've done amazing fantastic they topped the group you know algeria burkina faso and they defeated Namibia, uh three no quite convincingly and what's so amazing with this angola team is that they're so fun to watch they're defensively solid they're tough to break down and they just hit you on the counter attack they just hit you on the counter attack and they have some amazing players like freddy mabalulu um and these kind of guys are just amazing, like absolutely unbelievable. Obviously, they never won it before. And um, this could be amazing for them. And I believe it's the second time, excuse me, in history where they reached the quarterfinals. I think the last time was in 2010. So this is a history making. Like if they make the semifinals, it was the best they've ever done in their history. So what what do I think is going to happen, guys? I think Nigeria will be probably the better team for the majority of the game. But I just think Angola is going to have that one, one little... I think Nigeria's going to have a one lapse of concentration and then goal is going to score. I feel like this game will be kind of like the actual Guinea game that Nigeria played in the opening game of the, um, the AFCON, right? And I have a, now there are some rumors that Uzoho might start. So that might actually be a, that might be a curse for Nigeria because let's be real, I don't trust Uzoho once whatsoever and he might make an error. So for Nigeria, for my Nigerian sake, I hope Uzoho doesn't start because if Uzoho starts, you guys are in big trouble. So I'm going to go with Angola. Just a slightly edges one, one nil against Nigeria, but it's going to be a tight game. It's going to be a close game, guys. Next up, it is DR Congo versus Guinea. Uh, this is a huge one. DR Congo, for me, I still can't believe they haven't won a game. I still can't believe they haven't won a game and they're in this position that they could potentially go to the semifinals. And DR Congo, man, they've been great. And like midfield wise, defense wise, done a good job. You have to give credit to Sebastian Deserbi for what he's done with this team. But the one issue I have with DR Congo is that they still are insistent on starting Bakambu. Bakambu, for me, is just a disgrace. I'm sorry, Bakambu is an absolute horrendous. I don't know what it's going to take for Bakambu to get benched because, I'm sorry, if DR Congo wants to win this game, they can't start him. I'm going to, I, I, this might seem crazy to say this, but I'm going to say this right now. If DR Congo starts Bakambu, they are going to, for sure, have to go to penalties because they cannot win this in 90 with 20 with him. Now, if they don't, if they bench him, then maybe there's a chance. But with him, I I, I, I literally don't see it. Now, I imagine he scores a goal. Now, if he scores a goal, guys, feel free to clip this. But um, I'm pretty sure he won't score. That's how confident I am. As for Guinea, they have been great. This team is playing really well. And even though they got the group got out of the group in third place, they were one of the best third place teams. They played really well. And they only, it only came down to goal difference, you know. And at the end of the day, they made it farther than Cameroon. So it, it really didn't mean much to them. You know, and um, you have to give them credit because for me, this team presses like a unit. This team is defensively solid. This team can attack and this team is lethal. You know, now Guinea don't score a lot of goals. They're actually not that great when it comes to scoring goals. They're very, very, 
kind of iffy. But the one thing I like about the skinny team is that they press so well as a unit. And DR Congo does as well. They're, they're such a great team in terms of possession. This is a very typical one to call. I think this one could potentially go to penalties. And if it did, if it does go to penalties, I'm 100% back in DR Congo. I do not trust Guinea whatsoever on penalties. And I think the likes of Grossi can help come up clutch. And I feel like Grossi is going to have that moment. I feel like this will be his moment to have that breakthrough moment and score the decisive goal to put DR to put Guinea through to the semifinals. I just feel like Grossi is going to come up clutch. I just have this feeling for some reason. He's been so well for Stuttgart. And now it is his opportunity. And he should be able to start this game. I, I assume he'll be fully fit for this game. So I'm going to go with Guinea to win this 1-0 to move on to the semifinals. Moving on. Uh, sorry, we got Mali versus Ivory Coast. This is a big one. Mali have been fantastic. They are such a well-organized team. And this is a team that I've kind of been very critical of. I said this team is kind of overrated. And I don't really rate this team this highly, but I got to give them their flowers because what they've done to get to the stage has been unbelievable. You know, they, you know, they topped the group. They made it to the quarterfinals. They, de you know, defeated Burkina Faso, a team that usually does very well in the knockout stage. And this is actually Burkina Faso had never gone out this early in the knockout stage. So that's actually history in the making them for them. And so for Mali in particular, man, they're such a well organized team. This defense is so amazing. Triore, then you have the likes of Hydera. Basuma, and you know what's crazy? Basuma didn't even play against um, Burkina Faso, and they still able were able to beat them, right? So it just shows you how great the midfield the midfield depth is for Mali. The one area I have concern with is their attack. Their attack, I think, is very limited. They don't have a lot of striker options, and I just think that Mali, for me, that miss of Cone, I think, is a huge miss. As for Ivory Coast, this is also a very solid team. Like when you look at the team as a whole. But this team haven't been great this tournament. Let's be real here, guys. They were very lucky to make it out of the group stage. They relied on their luck against um, Se um, sorry, Senegal to make it through. And they had to rely on Kessie to score that penalty. You know. But the one thing I say about Ivory Coast is that this team has spirit. This team has determination. You know, And this team just never gives up. You know, And the thing is, like everyone was thinking Senegal would thrash Ivory Coast in the round of six. Everyone was thinking that. But what I love about football is that Things don't go always what you expect. You know, just because Extra Guinea did it doesn't mean Senegal can do it, you know. And I just feel like for me, it was one of those bad days in the office. But, you know, Ivory Coast, they're riding the momentum now. They have an interim coach who is a local coach. That could be very, very key here. And I just think for Ivory Coast, man, I really like this make of this team because this team is unbelievable. You have Sengar, Seko Fofana, Kessie, you know, and they can bring players off the bench as well, which is insane. You could bring... They were able to bring on Haller, Adingra, and these kind of players off the bench. Pepe as well. They were the difference makers. I just feel like for me, Ivory Coast have more options in the team than Mali. I just feel like Ivory, Mali, for me, as good as they are, their midfield is what makes them solid. I feel like, for me, Ivory Coast has a better midfield, better defense. Their attack is a bit debatable, but Ivory Coast have more options from the attack. So this will be a very interesting one. I think this could go to pens. I feel like both teams will be cautious and conservative and go for pens. And I feel like if it goes to penalties, I'm back in Ivory Coast because I don't trust a Mali goalkeeper whatsoever. Um, that goalkeeper is very suspect. And um, I think Ivory Coast's goalkeeper is fantastic. And plus, they were in a position against Senegal. You know, they got the experience, whereas Mali haven't. And I believe this is the first time Mali's made the quarterfinals in a few editions. So shout out to Mali. But yeah, I'm going to go Ivory Coast to win this. I'm going to say this game ends 1-1 and Ivory Coast win this on penalties. Moving on to the final quarterfinal we got here is Cape Verde versus South Africa. For me, guys, this is the toughest one to call. I made my mind for the other three, but this is the one I am most split on. I still, even at this recording this video, I'm still 100. I still haven't decided. I have just about narrowly picked a winner, but this is tight. This is very tight. I'm very, it was too close to call. Cape Verde, man, what they've done to get to the stage has been unbelievable. You know, topping the group in the process, you know, with powerhouse teams like Egypt and Ghana, former AFCON winners, both of them, of course. And you have to give them amazing credit because this is unbelievable to be in this position at the quarterfinals. This is the best they've done since 2013, I believe. And I just think what's amazing with this team, you have Bebe, Ryan Mendez, Montero. This team is so well organized, such a pressing team. As for South Africa, this is a team that I think we need to give a lot of respect because I'll, because many of the South African players play in the local league. I believe this is the only team left of the eight teams that are entirely local-based players. And the fact that they defeated Morocco, one of the heavy tournament favorites coming into this tournament, is absolutely astounding, astonishing to do it in that kind of fashion. And you have to give them a ton of respect because South Africa is a team that been knocked off 
tournament favorites. You know, they knocked out Egypt in 2019. We can't forget that, you know. And I just think what makes this match so intriguing is which one's going to win? Because I can't call. I can't really call. I made my mind with the other three, but this one I still haven't made my mind. But what it came down for me, though, is that I just feel like for me, I think Cape Birdie's going to do this. And I have the re- – my feeling is that I just feel like for me, Cape Birdie, what they've done has been – insane to do this you know make it this far and i just have a feeling that k birdie is going to do this i i feel like for me k birdie have more difference makers off the bench where south africa for me really organized they're very very tough to break down defensively solid but i just think k birdie is gonna i don't know i just have a feeling they're gonna score a late goal i think this could go to extra time and i think i'm going to say k birdie wins us one nil after extra time but who knows this might even go to penalties i wouldn't even be surprised um but yeah, man, that's, that's going to be interesting. So these are this is the recap of the quarterfinals. I have your so got Angola versus Cape okay, Verde and Ivory Coast versus Guinea semifinals. Let me know your predictions, comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe if you made it this far. And comment below. If you made it this far at the end of the video, comment below. Hashtag AFCON is the best. If you made it this far, I want you to comment that so I know who made it all the way. So remember, guys, like and subscribe, of course. Check out my other pops in the description below. And of course, click that join button to get extra members' videos, member streams. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.